Welcome back to Checkpoint Church and our nerdy sermons. This is going to be a bit of a different one because uh, for those of you that haven't uh, noticed, if you aren't on our Twitch or on our Discord, I just vanished for a week. I went to a conference and I went to Colorado and had a wonderful time. And I brought my like phone, I brought my Steam Deck, I brought my Switch. I was ready to play some games and watch some TV shows. But I got out there and I had such a good time that the week was over and I hadn't like done anything nerdy. And so, with the exception of like going to Meow Wolf and stuff like that, I had a lot of things to do, but I did end up actually watching a lot of shows. And so, I did backlog two weeks worth of nerdy sermons, but I don't, I don't have anything for today. Plus, I got back this week and I've been planning for the checkathon. There's been so much going on that it's like I haven't had any time to watch an anime, so I don't know what to talk about. So instead of talking about something like we normally do, I thought it might be fun to answer some of your questions from the comments. We get a lot of comments and a lot of different things said about us here and there, so I thought it might be a fun thing to do for this video to answer some of your burning questions. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Checkpoint Church, Church for Nerds, Geeks, and Gamers. I am your nerd pastor, Nate. I'm glad that you're here and glad to answer these questions for you. So like I mentioned before the little stinger there, we do get a lot of questions here at Checkpoint Church. I always encourage you to use the comment section down below. I love looking at your comments. I love answering the questions as I'm able to. But over the years, we've accumulated some that have been a little bit harder to answer in just a comment section. So I thought I'd answer them here. So let's go through them one by one and have some fun. All right, our first question is from Stu's Meister, who has a lovely Tony Tony profile picture there. Hey, this is super off topic as it is about One Piece. So for a long time, one of my favorite characters was Zoro. And as a Christian, I was wondering if he is still a good character for a couple reasons. Number one, he called himself the King of Hell. And he also has a lot of Buddhist and Asura demon like attacks. Wondering what you thought. So you bring up an interesting point here, Stu's Meister. I think a tough question that we have to ask ourselves whenever we start to look at characters like we do often here at Checkpoint in these nerdy sermons is trying to put like a binary onto them. It's not really helpful for me personally to try and define someone as a good or a bad character. I think if we want to put any kind of binary terms, there can be well-developed characters and underdeveloped characters. So if you're going to try and analyze someone like a Loki, for instance, remember we did our Loki TV show analysis last year, Loki's not a good person, right? Loki is demonstrably, subjectively a bad person. And still, we're able to find some redeeming factors here and there, or if not redemption, we're able to find something that we can learn from. So a helpful thing for me to do whenever I'm looking at a character, whether it be a Zoro or a Loki, is to ask ourselves, can I learn anything from the way that this character acts? I find the best thing for us to do when we're analyzing a character is to take circumstances and see how they apply to our own personal life. This does require quite a bit of critical thinking. It absolutely requires a lot of scriptural thinking. So the better you know your Bible, the more that you study, the more that you're able to learn on the back end of things, or the more videos like this that you watch from Checkpoint, the more you're gonna be able to determine those things. Cause this does require a kind of process behind it. But typically a good starting point is to look at a character, find a circumstance where they're acting a certain way and ask yourself, hey, can I learn anything from this? What is that that I can learn and how can I then apply that? If you start to watch through our videos, you'll find that that's what we do a lot. We typically try to answer that question of what does this mean for us today? Whatever the little graphic that Nikki puts on the screen is. Uh, we wanna know what does this character do and how can we interpret that and apply it in our own lives? So your questions about does it matter if he called himself the king of hell or if he uses Buddha like attacks or whatever? No, like that doesn't matter to me at all. The question is, is something that he's doing going to have any kind of positive impact on my life or the way that I live? If yes, then let's learn from it. If not, then let's learn why to avoid it. And that is, for me, a helpful way of analyzing a character rather than just saying, is this a good character or a bad character? Okay, next up we have a question from Vessel Nation. Hi, Pastor, I have a question. So you played Cyberpunk 2077. If that's fair to assume, given that I've seen you talk about it a few times, how did you do it? I had to stop because I felt the sexual themes in it to be overwhelming, even with the nude sensor on. I did play Cyberpunk. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an exceptional game. However, I want to acknowledge what you're really driving at here, and that's that sexualization in media is a real crisis. It's a real thing. Addiction and mental health is something that can really cause a lot of issues, especially regarding sexualization. 
And so I don't, I don't want to like uh, brush aside your concern here in any way. I want to make sure that I'm very clear that I affirm that this is a real crisis for many people. This is a real issue that is going on. And I think it's a conversation to be had. I don't, however, think it's a new conversation. I think we've had this going on for quite a while. In fact, I would go so far as to argue that not suitable for work content has been around uh, since printed material. Literally, whenever I was in Colorado last week, they had a penny arcade and there was a, there was a Nickelodeon like peep show in it. I think what this requires is ultimately a lot of self-discretion, a lot of opportunities to kind of know where our limits are, to know what we are capable of watching and what we're not capable of watching. Thankfully, ratings on games, ratings on movies, ratings on TV shows have gotten pretty advanced. So we're able to know a pretty good limit of what to expect whenever we walk into a new experience. There are sites like Taming Gaming and Common Sense Media that you're able to look at and see a little bit about what to expect in the materials that you're about to consume. And so knowing your own personal limits, whether they be sexual in nature or whether you're just uncomfortable with certain conversation topics, you need to know that going into things. A good case in point would be Detroit Become Human. There are conversations in Detroit Become Human that have nothing to do with sexualization, but make me incredibly uncomfortable. Maybe they relate to domestic violence or something along those lines, those kind of things need to be named in the ratings that we find online so that we can know about ourselves. I think this has a lot more to do with trigger warnings and content warnings than anything else. If you have a piece of art and a piece of media that's being created, there's only a limit to so much control that you have over that. People are going to make what they're going to make. And so the question becomes, what are you interested, willing, and capable of consuming responsibly? So my best piece of advice would be to check websites uh, that rate games like this so that you can know what kind of things to expect from them, uh, to watch Let's Plays, because most of the time they're gonna have the censoring turned up pretty high. They're gonna try and limit all that they can, especially if it's not like just uh, uh, showing the gameplay Let's Play, but instead somebody actually playing it, then they'll at least be able to diffuse the situation in a way that will hopefully be appropriate. Obviously, you've gotta be careful who you're watching. Um, I know that notably for our streams, I always proclaim at the beginning, we are a family-friendly stream, but we may not always play family-friendly games. So you'll never hear a wordy dirty coming out of my mouth, but you will often hear it coming out of the mouths of the people in the games that we play. I try to always be upfront with that, but if you find a streamer like that or a Let's Player like that that's willing to be upfront with you, then that could be another safe space for you. And if you're not sure that even you can like handle the game, then watch videos like ours, where we're breaking down and doing video essays on some of these games. Maybe you're interested in the themes, but you're just uncomfortable with the sexualization. Well, we'll still talk about those themes and break them down, and you can watch videos like this to still engage with the media without actually engaging with the media. All right, next up is John Ramirez. Hey man, love the vids. Can you do a video on Jujutsu Kaisen? I mean, yeah, yeah, sure, I would love to. Can't wait for the new season. All right, next up, we have a question from Ahava on our top 10 games of 2001. Okay, uh, weird to see that this comment is on that video, but let's see it. This channel and the whole organization is so unbiblical, you do not attract people to believe in Christ with the world, and also just the wickedness that is promoted uh, en masse is in so many of these games should be a sign of your spiritual immaturity. How do you not see any of it? You must be blind and deaf. Subjectivity does not supersede sin. Listen to the Bible and not your own deceitful heart. Okay, you caught me. This one actually isn't a question. It's just one that I really wanted to address because first off, if you can even get past all of the ad homonyms, you can see that Ahava probably didn't watch our videos. They just know that we play video games and we talk about video games and they happen to look at the top 10 games of 2001. So maybe something about Sonic Adventure just made them really mad, not sure. So I really just wanted to kind of call them out for not paying attention. I thought that was important to say that often you're going to find comments of people um, kind of bashing Checkpoint Church or about the things that we discuss that have never actually engaged with the media. Now maybe you're saying, hang on, Nathan, they may have watched some of your videos. They must not have because they would know if they'd watched anything that we read our Bible. We literally have scripture in every single nerdy sermon that we put out there. We really want to focus on scripture and we do our best to exegete both the passages as well as the media. So every single video that we have made in this Nerdy Sermon series has done that exact same structure. Sorry to be uh, pulling back the curtain here a little bit. If you watch our videos, what you're gonna hear is an introduction, you're gonna hear our scripture, you're gonna hear me lay out the media that we're talking about, break down a theme from it. Then you're gonna hear me talk about our scripture, lay out the scripture, break down a theme from it, and then I'm gonna tie those two themes together, and then I'm gonna give you a so what. And then we close the video. That's every single one that we've done. Now, a bulk of that content is actually reading a scripture, 
analyzing the scripture, breaking down the scripture, tying the scripture in. To make any kind of claim that we're not scripturally based, you must not have watched our videos because you just can't. It makes no sense to make an argument that we're unbiblical in any sort of imagination, especially with our nerdy sermons. You want to say that we don't talk about scripture enough on stream? You want to say that we don't talk enough about scripture in our top 10 videos? Okay, that's not what those videos are for. But these nerdy sermons that we create, these are our bread and butter of our scriptural discipleship process. And every single video tackles scripture in some way, shape, or form and presents some kind of message that will ultimately lead to the message that Jesus loves you, Jesus gave his life for you, you are redeemed, you are filled with grace because of this gift. So I'm sorry, Ahaba, I would recommend that you actually watch our videos and uh, maybe take it a little bit easier on the ad hominems because they're not effective. Now to an actually good constructive comment by Kelly Ellibrocht here four months ago over on our Can Christians Play Cult of the Lamb, which was a pretty controversial game back in the day. My problem with this one is that it's targeted to children and many who have not come to know Jesus. The temptation they may act on may not be for the good and encourage ill intentions. This is a fair assessment. I agree that Cult of the Lamb's marketing is a little bit skeevy. Uh, they've done some interesting things online. They do have an adorable lamb figurine as their like mascot. And any game with a mascot is gonna be confusing because what other mascots do you have out there, right? You have Sonic, you have Crash, you have Mario. We know these mascots and we know that typically they mean that things are for kids. And so this is a fair assessment. I don't knock your uh, constructive criticism here, but I do think that this is just even more of an argument for what I was talking about earlier with somebody's comment vessel. You just gotta be aware. Parents have to be aware. As a parent of two girls, I've gotta be incredibly aware of the content that they're consuming, of the media that they're watching, and of the questions that I feel comfortable answering with them at this point in time. Taming Gaming, Common Sense Media, those are two sources. I would love to see Checkpoint create more of our own sources over on our To The Point newsletter, because I think this is helpful information and it's things that we need to tackle. And so I appreciate you being aware, I appreciate you being cognizant of this fact, and I appreciate you being a little bit reticent to even uh, receive the media itself. I think that's responsible as a parent, and I encourage you to do more work in learning and exploring these themes. If you just wanna cut them off, then hey, that's your right as a parent, that's your Thing that you get to do. It's not the choice that I'm going to make in my parenting. I'm going to choose to really understand the media that they're consuming and then present it to them after I've consumed it myself. But that's just a call that I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to read up on it. I'm going to learn about it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll give them the opportunity to explore the media that they really want to explore. But rather than just cut it off wholesale, I'm a whole lot more interested in entering conversation, especially as they get older. I love the opportunity to have deeper conversations. I love the opportunity to look my kids in the face and actually talk to them about things that they have questions about. So I hope that as a parent, that's something that we'll always consider rather than just kind of shoving VeggieTales down their throat, which VeggieTales has some great themes here and there. I'm not knocking it necessarily, but rather than just shove the same old Christian media down their throat, allow them to experience the media that their friends are experiencing and be there to answer questions when they need them answered. All right, our next question comes from Skyset Blue five months ago over on Arcan's Christian Watch anime video. How about RPGs and JRPGs? Video games, I love them and I am Christian. I think I was unsure to share this because most people in Japanese culture do not believe in anything and have no issues with demons, etc. Sky Skyset, I do wanna encourage you to explore the Japanese culture because I think there is a little bit more to Japanese culture than they don't believe in anything. It's probably more nuanced in a lot of ways than just that. Typically there's a lot of like Shintoism and that kind of thing leading to some of their beliefs and the culture that's happening in their religious spaces. But to answer your question, I don't think that culture itself makes anything off limits. I think media is media and is worth exploring regardless of the culture that it comes from. We have to be aware first and foremost that if we are going to be as vehemently supportive of the Bible as we are, and we are, then we need to acknowledge that that in and of itself comes from a myriad of cultures. And so if we're unwilling to tackle cultures that are different than the one that we currently live within, then we'd have to give up reading the Bible. And I'm certainly not interested in doing that. So I think that one thing we have to be aware of is that culture exists outside of our own selves. Culture is something that happens as time moves on and as people begin to cohabitate and begin to create new societies. And so rather than throw things out wholesale just because we're not quite sure about some of the like myriad of beliefs they might have, I just find that to be an utterly unhelpful way to look at the media that we explore. So instead, I would encourage you to look at themes, to look at things that are drawn out of the media that we're experiencing. 
RPGs and JRPGs, we've talked about a lot of them here on the channel. I'd recommend you go look up those nerdy sermons and find out a little bit more about how we might tackle those kind of things because I think that those games have a lot to them and a lot of wonderful things that they bring with them. But rather than look at them as some kind of whole cultural thing, try to tackle some of the themes within the actual medium, the actual media being created there. That'd be my piece of advice. Um, I think that RPGs and JRPGs are totally capable of being played by a Christian and being tackled and understood. So uh, if that's what you're looking for, I hope that answers your question. I know it's kind of a strange way to roundabout answer it, but to answer your question, yes, Christians can play JRPGs, they can play RPGs. We can do a whole lot more than we give ourselves credit for, and I hope that you'll consider experiencing even more, because I think that the more that we experience, the deeper our relationship with Christ can ultimately become. With that, we're gonna wrap up this video. Feel free to ask all the questions that you would like. I'd love to do more of these. This was fun to kind of look through these comments and answer some questions here. Let me know if you enjoyed this one. As always, the best way to do that is by clicking that like button. I really do check that like button. So if this was one that you enjoyed more than our normal video that we create, give us a thumbs up and maybe we'll do more of these. I had fun. I thought it was a good time to put this together and hopefully you did too. Hey, if you want more of Checkpoint Church and the wonderful things that we do, we have a new stream schedule starting this week. We announced it at the Checkathon on Friday. So we will still be streaming Mondays from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's no change. But Tuesdays, we are starting to stream during the nighttime. So from 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. Eastern time over on Twitch. And then our Thursday stream is actually bumping up an hour from 10 until 1, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. So a little bit of a different time period going on, but we're super excited about the change in stream. If you aren't able to catch us on Twitch, then you can go join our Discord. That's where we're active 24 seven, hanging out in community. We might be watching some new TV shows. We might be hanging out and playing a game together. We've got a lot of things planned in the month ahead. So I highly recommend checking that out. I'll link both of those down below. Be sure to do me a favor, go check those out. If you're looking for more videos to watch like this one, well, good luck, cause this is kind of the first one. I'll recommend our question series. We have a couple of videos in which we answer specific questions such as, can Christians watch anime? That's one of our biggest videos here on the channel. One of our most controversial for some reason, people get real riled up about that one. We also did one about can Christians celebrate Halloween? Um, that was a, a, a fun, easy one to answer that I really only answered because people on my Facebook page kept saying that we couldn't and I was fed up seeing it. So there you go, that's two videos for you to watch. Hey, quick question for you. What questions do you have for me? Drop them down in the chat below. I would love to read any question that you might have. Maybe it could be like a, a, a starter question. What's something that you've always wanted to ask a checkpoint but were too afraid to ask? What's a, what's a question that like has made you nervous up until this point? I give you permission to ask those awkward questions down below. With that, we're gonna end this video as we always do with our three things that we believe to be true about every single one of you out there. Whether you have questions, whether you doubt us, whether you disagree with us, whether you just downright don't like us, we still believe these three things to be true about every single one of you out there. Number one, that God loves you, like really, really love you. Number two, we love you, we want community with you. That's what we're doing here on YouTube and Discord and Twitch. And number three, believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place, why? Because you are in it. That matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. That is why we do these videos, because we want to let you know that you matter. With that, whether I see you in the Discord right now on Twitch on Monday or right here, same time, same place for another of these nerdy deep dives, I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye! That dream. Make it come true. Wonderful dreams and ideals give you the power to change the world. If anyone can, it's you. Check. Well then, farewell. <laughs> Dude, this game has had the raddest music of like any Pokemon game ever. <laughs>